Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and recently Ubiquity has leveled up their Switch game by coming out with four brand new enterprise switches. These are out of EA, they're absolutely available now. Links to everything I'm talking about down in the description below. The first enterprise switch is the Switch Enterprise 8 PoE, which features eight 2.5 gigabit 802.3 AT PoE Plus ports and two 10 gigabit SFP Plus ports. I mean, that's a really cool switch, especially for home users and prosumers. It's a nice small form factor switch that has the ability to power up, you know, some of these new access points that are coming out with 2.5 gigabit connectivity to the LAN. Or if you wanna have 2.5 gigabit connectivity to, you know, your desktop PC or between your desktop PC and your NAS or something like that. Great little switch for home users or I'd say more advanced home users or even small business users. Next we have this switch right here. This is the Switch Enterprise 24 PoE. We're gonna take a closer look at this switch in a second, but it features 12 2.5 gigabit ports. Again, they are 802.3 AT PoE. And then an additional 12 1 gigabit ports that are also 802.3 AT PoE Plus. Uh, actually, all the ports are PoE Plus. I think I said PoE a second ago. Uh, this also has two of the 10 gig SFP Plus ports and a couple of other cool things we're gonna take a look at when we take it out of the box. They also have a 48 port version, the USW Enterprise 48 PoE, that has 48 2.5 gigabit 802.3 AT PoE Plus ports and then four 10 gigabit SFP Plus uh, little modules or ports on that switch as well. And finally, they have the sort of big daddy switch that they came out with. It is the USW Enterprise XG24. Now that switch does not have PoE, but what it does have is 24 10 gigabit RJ45 ethernet ports and two SFP2825 gigabit SFP ports. Uh, I mean, those things are crazy. <laughs> so I have not tested those out yet. Uh, I'd like to get my hands on that Switch Enterprise XG at some point and see if I can do some, you know, 25 gigabit speed testing, but man, we're getting to a point where I need to really upgrade my lab to start testing out some of this equipment. All right, regardless though, let's go ahead and get this one out of the box. Now, all four of these switches feature that uh, 1.3 inch uh, LCM touchscreen display, the full color display that can also do uh, the AR stuff, right? So where you can use your phone to look at the ports in augmented reality and it shows you what's connected to what port. I did a video on that. I'll put a link to that somewhere on the screen. Okay. Woo, yeah, look at this thing. Anything else in the box? No. Oh, it's actually quite hefty. Now, look, okay, I, I'm really excited about this switch. So one of the first things you're gonna notice uh, about this Enterprise switch versus their older 24 port switches is that the older 24 port switches had 12 ports and 12 ports stacked on top of each other over here on the right hand side of the switch. This Enterprise switch has all of the ports in a row, which makes it a lot easier to patch this into a 1U patch panel. Uh, so it's kind of like made for patch panels and racks, and it's a little bit, I guess it's a little bit of a better design for a 24 port switch in my opinion. So across the front here, we have our 1.3 inch touchscreen, and then looking at the front, so the first 12 ports are the one gigabit ports, and then there's sort of a shaded line underneath the next 12 ports that says 2.5 gigabit, and then we've got our two 10 gigabit SFPs over here on the side. Uh, coming around the back, we have our power connector and it has the little locking mechanism. So this is sort of the locking power connector that we saw with the UDM SE. Looks like they're including that on at least their enterprise stuff. Uh, I have not seen that on any of the lower end switches yet. Maybe they'll add it in a newer hardware revision. Uh, we also have the USP Connect port. So this is for the redundant power supply, the USP RPS. This is basically, it's not really a UPS, it's just a secondary power supply that can power up multiple different unified devices. If there's a power outage, the notion is that 
uh, you know, or if the power supply fails on this or there's a power outage on this circuit, you would have the USP RPS on a separate circuit that will continue to power these devices in the event of some sort of failure. And it should have a reset switch, a reset hole somewhere as well. It does. Okay, so right over here in the front is the little tiny uh, reset hole. All right, also comes with a little box of accessories. Let's take a look inside here. So some screws for rack mounting. We have that nice braided cable uh, with sort of the locking notch on the side so that you can lock that into the back there. And then we have a couple of rack mount ears as well uh, and that's about it i want to get this thing put into my test rack over here and adopt it into unify so that we can take a look at it but first i want to crack it open and take a look at the inside of this usw enterprise 24 poe all right so taking a look inside this usw enterprise 24 poe uh, starting from the left here, this little board controls the 1.3 inch touchscreen display that's over here on the left hand side. Uh, then we see a separate board across the top. Uh, this is essentially the board that looks like it controls the 24 port uh, switch itself, the actual ethernet ports. Uh, but there is a board underneath that that the actual ports are connected to. See if I can get a sort of side view here. See, so there's this board on the bottom that the 24 port ethernet ports are actually connected to. And then there's this separate board on top. So my guess is that this is for PoE power to those ethernet ports or something like that. Uh, because if we look over here, here's the USP RPS, right? So this is the secondary power supply coming in here and we can see that it outputs this black cable over here to the main board. It also outputs all of these red cables over here to this top board. So maybe there's different power for the 2.5 gigabit ports versus the one gigabit ports or something. I don't know, that's really interesting design. Uh, then we have three sort of massive heat sinks in here. And uh, then this big section right here, of course, is the main power supply. We can see power coming in here, grounding wire, goes underneath here to this power supply, and there's also a heat sink right here. Additionally, there are fans right in the front here that blow across over the power supply and then out the back of the unit. So yeah, interesting design, and interesting to see that they're making really good use of the space inside of this 1U chassis. One thing that you might have noticed in my little video montage there is that I had to rewire a bit of my test network. I only had a couple of 10 gigabit SFP uh, modules, so I had to remove one of them from my existing USW Pro 24 switch and put that into the Enterprise switch, and then I had to reconnect that Pro switch with just a standard uh, you know, Cat6 cable. So moving into Unify, here I am at my uh, UDM Pro. I'm going to click on Unify Devices and we can see that the USW Enterprise 24 PoE is pending adoption. So we're going to click on that device and we're going to say adopt. While that's adopting, I'm going to come over here to settings and I'm going to give it the device name of USW Enterprise 24 PoE. And then we're going to let it do its thing. And once it's adopted, we'll come back and take a look. The USW Enterprise 24 PoE switch has been adopted into Unify and updated to the latest firmware. I'm actually running EA firmware on this UDM Pro. So the firmware version that I am currently running is version 5.76.7 on this Enterprise switch. So on the overview, we can see the model, MAC address, IP, firmware. We can see the temperature levels. We can see the uplinks and downlinks. And notice that we have successfully uplinked 
at 10 gigabit ethernet. We can see that in the switch ports as well. If I hover right here, port 26 is connected with an SFP 10G SR at 10 G base dash SR. We can see all of the sort of little details and nuts and bolts right there. Now I haven't plugged anything else into this switch yet. Uh, if we click on insights, that's gonna show us our historical CPU and RAM. And then as far as settings go, we can change the name like we already did. We can look at all of the individual ports and we should have everything that we can do with a standard Unify switch uh, with this switch as well. Let's look at, for instance, port 13. So we can rename the port. We can set a port profile if we want to stick a port to a specific VLAN. Uh, we can do a Mac filtering. And then we can do some port profile overrides, such as enabling or disabling the PoE on any of the ports, changing from switching to mirroring to aggregation, and then all of this other stuff that you can see down below. We can also control the screen, the 1.3 inch touch screen. I have it set so that it does multi-screen synchronization in the rack, which is kind of fun. Uh, network is DHCP. We've got some services we can disable or enable right here, as you can see, including SNMP, RSTP, jumbo frames, etc. And then we can do all the standard Unify management stuff. All of these enterprise switches also have layer three capabilities. And the one thing that I want to caveat about these switches is that Unify has not yet completely implemented what I would consider to be a true layer three solution. It does have the ability to do layer three, but it's limited. And so for anyone unfamiliar, uh, layer three means if you have two different VLANs in your network, for instance, you've got a camera VLAN and you've got your main VLAN. Layer three switching means that all traffic coming into this switch from that camera VLAN and destined for that main VLAN doesn't have to go all the way to the router in order to do the routing. The switch can do the routing between those layer three VLANs and it you know, reduces resources on the UDM Pro or whatever firewall device you have in place so that the switch is sort of taking the burden of that, uh, that routing within you know, inner VLAN routing. Now I say it's limited because there's really not a ton more than that you can do. If you have existing true layer three switches, you can't use, at least today, you can't use a Unify Enterprise switch as a drop-in replacement for a true layer three switch. You kind of have to design your network with Ubiquiti's layer three limitations in mind. And again, hopefully as Unify becomes more mature, we will see additional layer three functionality that negates this sort of you know, disclaimer that I have to give about their layer three functionality. Uh, but for now, it is what it is. If you guys wanna look at some uh, layer three and Ubiquiti videos, including what limitations there are, other YouTubers have done a number of videos on that. I don't think I'm probably gonna do that myself. All right, so I'm not gonna dig too deep into the layer three stuff. Uh, one more thing that I do wanna see though, is I wanna see some 2.5 gigabit connectivity. So let's try to do that next. All right, so just to prove that this enterprise switch can indeed do 2.5 gigabit connectivity, I have hooked up a unknown mystery 2.5 gigabit device to this switch. Uh, on port 24 here, and as we can see, yes, it is at 2.5 gigabit full duplex. So links to everything that I've talked about down in the description below, but what do you guys think about these new enterprise switches from Ubiquiti? I actually love that they're moving into this sort of more enterprise realm. I've heard a ton of complaints online about people saying, where's the 2.5 gigabit stuff? Where's the 10 gigabit stuff? Well. Here it is. All right, so what do you guys think about it? Put that down in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for two to three brand new tech videos every single week. All right, we will see you guys in the next video.